Hey everyone, it's Road Pickle Steve again. Yeah, we're still up here in the San Bernardino National Forest. And uh, it's really dry up here. I don't think this place has seen any rain for the last few months. Um, and so it's really dusty as all heck. And uh, the trailer is pretty dusty too. We've had some winds here. Uh, we, uh, we've been having winds here quite a bit since we've been here. But um, I want to talk about... Um, our next project and uh, it's that little antenna up there so that's the antenna to our wee boost um, we've had a, a wee boost in our trailer for gosh I'd, I'd say um, go almost two years now and uh, it's worked pretty well for us for quite a while although recently it's not really working all that well for us lately and um, I think uh, I think it's just wearing out. No, I don't know. I mean, other other people who have a wee boost. I mean, maybe you might want to chime in. But um, when we first got it, we were getting probably uh, a decibel gain of about you know fifteen to twenty five decibels, and uh, that was enough to improve our signal strength from like one bar up to sometimes as high as three bars um i mean generally a one to two bar boost is what we would get and uh we we're pretty happy with it but lately the thing hardly works now uh we're getting a boost of about maybe three to six decibels which is pretty much useless doesn't really do much for you um so I'm thinking maybe the amplifier, that's the the unit that's inside the trailer that boosts the signal. Maybe the amplifier has just gone to shit. Uh, the other idea is that uh, the coax cable that you see running from the bottom of the antenna, you know, runs down the length of the trailer and uh, actually comes down about right here. And uh, goes into that little black cap and um, I'm thinking that maybe the coax cable could be shot. I don't know. But uh, that's the cable that WeBoost gives you. So um, they claim it to be, a, you know, weather resistant and low loss and all that. Um, but in either case, we found some other alternatives to the WeBoost. Uh, I thought I'd show you when we go inside the trailer. But... Uh, yeah, you see that little uh, black cap that covers up a hole that I drilled into the side of the wall. I know for all you other ATC owners out there, that's probably a cardinal sin, right? Drilling a hole through the wall. But uh, that's the only way to um, get that cable indoors. In fact, that's what WeBoost actually recommended. You just drill a hole. And they give you that little black cap, but it's a tiny cap. It's so small that it hardly even works. Um, it doesn't really mount into the trailer very well. So, as you can see, my caulking job is pretty, pretty horrible. Um, and you can also see some old tape that I had on there, too. I never bothered to uh, wipe off. But um, I was looking for a larger cap to put on there. And I went to uh, a lot of RV parts supply stores looking for caps. And they only sell them in white. And I thought, well, I don't want a white cap on a black trailer. The interesting thing is that we boost gives you gave you know gives you that little cap and of course they give you a black cap and uh i couldn't understand why they would give you a black cap when most rvs are white right so it's kind of funny how it goes all right so we're inside the atc toy hauler and we have the we boost amplifying unit inside the cabinet and right now it's turned off there's no lights on it you can see the hole where it comes in from the outside and it's actually plugged into a DC port so it's getting constant 12 volt you know 24 hours a day seven days a week and we'll run that thing pretty much for several weeks at a time and uh, the amplifying unit will get pretty hot um, so I don't know if that plays into anything or not but the indoor antenna comes out the bottom over there and uh, it just kind of runs up the ceiling and we actually have these uh, cloth 
I don't know what you call it, cloth coverings on the ceiling just for looks, but the indoor antenna actually comes out to about here and runs to right here. And that's where it is, it's just laying in this cloth. And it, the configuration's worked pretty well for us for, um, you know, almost two years, but, you know, last few months, it seems that that reboost just ain't working too well. So I want to show you what we're going to replace it with. All right, so this is my desk, and um, here's our fabulous new solution. It's this little antenna you just stick up on a window. And uh, it's actually got a couple of suction cups right here. Um, suction cups don't work that well, actually. This thing will eventually swing down. But it's not too bad. Um, little cable comes down, and it comes over to this Wii Boost. Or not Wii Boost, I'm sorry. A MiFi unit or hotspot unit and um, so this uh, hotspot's got dual antenna ports it's got an in and an out over here and that's what these uh, cables connect to so the, this antenna is designed to be used with a hotspot with dual antenna ports um, this is the package it comes in it's uh, made by Netgear and they call it a MIMO antenna the actual performance of these things are pretty good. Um, I'm seeing a gain of about, gosh, about 10 to sometimes 18 decibels. Um, and you compare that to what I was getting with the Wii Boost originally, yeah, about 20 to 25 decibels. So it's really not that, not that much worse. It's it's pretty good. Part of what makes this uh, antenna work well is that it has a short cable. And um, and that's part of the challenge with um, 4G signals and antennas and boosters is that uh, the signal will actually bleed through the cable. So you want to keep your cable short. And unfortunately, with the Wii Boost unit, you have an outdoor antenna and an indoor antenna, and those two antennas have to be at least eight feet apart. So um, when the signal comes in through the outdoor antenna, course it it starts to bleed through that coax cable um, another thing is that these hotspot units are getting so much better so you know we have Verizon and in years past their hotspot units did a kind of a lackluster job at picking up signal on their own but these hotspot units that they make today um, have much better internal antennas and they do a, um, a lot better job of picking up signal. Sometimes you don't even need the antenna. I'll just take this hotspot and just sit it on the window and it'll do really well at just picking up signal on its own. Um, the newer hotspot units that Verizon is selling now, um, the, the new 5G hotspot, doesn't even have antenna ports on them. So uh, eventually, you know, Verizon will, will shift over to that and uh, you won't even be able to use antennas anymore with them. But um, that's okay because I think these hotspot units are doing pretty good at picking up signal. And um, along with the fact that, you know, Verizon and AT&T, they just keep putting up more cell towers, that I think um, people won't even need to buy a Wii Boost unit anymore. You can just get a hotspot and throw it up on a window and you'd be good to go. Well, um, if you're interested in buying one of these antennas, they're not very expensive. They're only about 30 bucks, and you get them off of Amazon. I actually bought two of them, so I got one here for uh, my desk, and Sasha actually has one over on her desk. So, you know, we each have our own hotspot devices, and uh, that's worked, pretty, worked out pretty well for us the past couple of months. So I think we're just going to go ahead and go with these antennas, and I'm going to just start taking down the whole Weeboo stuff. All right, and you see we're on the roof now. Just got to be careful where you stand. I stand on the cross beams. But I just uh, removed all the stuff from inside the trailer. Now I'm just pulling all this wire out. Yeah, one thing about these aluminum roofs, um, I always want to step on the cross beams. 
course the advantage is you don't have any rotting. So not like those other guys, you gotta recut their roots every winter. And so this is actually the WeBoost trucker antenna. This didn't come with uh, the unit that I bought. I actually bought this separately. And the trucker antenna mounts on a horizontal bar. So I just bought some galvanized um, pole at a Home Depot and just twisted it 90 degrees. So I can mount it. It's worked pretty well. The galvanized pole is actually attached to the ramp door um the ramp door latch which is aluminum <laughs> trying to show you but um having all everything mounted metal um gives the antenna um a ground so it theoretically improves your performance all right so this is to show you how i mounted the pole um i just use these little screw clamps just mounted this pole to the uh, ramp door to latch. And these screw clamps have worked pretty well. I mean, when I put them on a couple years ago, I would test them, you know, before I took off. And, uh, you know, they never got loose. So that's how it's been the last couple of years. It's, I can uh, just leave it like that and drive with it. All right, so there's the antenna. I've been, uh, Looking at this uh, wire coax cable, and uh, oops, and uh, it doesn't look bad. Um, so I don't think the problem is the coax cable. I mean, it's not like chewed up, or I don't see any holes in it, or anything wore out on it. I mean, it's not like it didn't like get cramped or anything, or crimped. So, um, it's not the coax cable, it's definitely the WeBoost unit itself. It just, uh, ain't boosting like it used to. Well, all right, I mean, I pretty much got everything off of there. I mean, that's the project right there, not a whole lot. I just thought I'd uh, shoot a little video and tell you about our, our uh, 4G options and solutions. So, all right, well, this has been Road Pickle Steve. We'll catch you later, over and out.